Did you know there is a very special message baked into this March 25th lunar eclipse for the United States, a phenomenal turning point. In this video, I am going to tell you exactly what that is, cycles in history that relate to this, and how this time around it's different. Also, how a saint and a very famous Hollywood movie have really profound messages that are clued into this eclipse and this particular chart delineation. My name is Erliana Samsara, Star Sound Speaks, starsoundastrology.com. And this is episode 300 of Star Sound Speaks. 300, the big 300. Please do like, share, subscribe. Make sure you hit that notification bell. Get updated on all the future ones. I practice traditional or Hellenistic blended with the outer planets. And I use whole sign houses. All right, so what am I talking about here? And why is this important? Let's pull up the USA chart. What we're looking at here is what is called the progressed chart. That is where this profound message is happening. For those of you who don't know what a progressed chart is, how does it differ from natal? So I'm going to take a minute to explain that. Natal chart, it's a snapshot of where the planets were in the sky the minute that, in this case, the United States was born. Transiting planets, such as you see here, planets in the sky right now. The progressed chart is a little different. It's where the chart of the United States, what energies is it now experiencing since it was founded 248 years ago? The time since it has moved forward, the progressed sun is now in Pisces. I want to draw your attention to right here, the sun and the moon, 19 degrees. Back in October, the sun moved into 19 Pisces. Just a few hours after the lunar eclipse happening March 25th, the moon will join up with the sun. We call that a progressed new moon. So it's not the new moon out there in the sky. This has to do just with the United States related to its chart. So as you can see here, the United States is entering a new phase, a new chapter, all things Piscean. So its purpose, its purpose and the way in which it expresses itself is going to have this new beginning and it's in the sign of Pisces. So I'm going to be explaining just what that means and what kind of clues can we get when we look at the chart. But the fact that it's linking up right at 19 degrees, mutable sign, fourth house, during an eclipse, like this is... This is really rare because there have been progressed moons that I'm going to walk you through in history. What happened when we had progressed new moons in certain houses? What happened? And we can see there's, there's a thread of familiarity, a synchronicity. But this time it's going to be very different. So I'm going to explain the past of what happened. And you'll see some commonality, but this time it's going to be different. So I'm going to explain all of it to you. So for the purposes of this talk, to just bring it down to more manageable <laughs> confines, I'm going to go back in history and talk about when the progressed new moon happened in angular houses. Why this is so important is not only is it a new cycle, it's in an angular house, which means fourth house. First, fourth, seventh, and tenth houses are all angular houses. And those are the most, as my teacher used to say, those houses speak with a megaphone. So let's go back to the year 1846. So in 1846, the progressed new moon happened up here, 20 degrees of Virgo. What happened in eight, June of 1846 influenced the next 90 years. That is when we had some significant changes with migration. That's one of the key words of today's talk, migration, movement, leaving one place moving to another. What got started was pioneers, the Oregon Trail. It was the first real mass migration out west. There's another trail called the Mormon Trail. The Mormons, Latter-day Saints, moved en masse. Thousands and thousands of people left Illinois and went out west. So they even called this one trail the Mormon Trail. So we're talking about mass migrations of people. What also happened in 1846, the Irish potato famine. Yes, that was in Ireland, 
But it was related to us, of course, because that is what fueled the first huge wave of immigration to the United States, the largest migration in history at the time. The California gold rush was another one. Virgo, Earth, somebody discovers gold in the Earth. 300,000 people went out west in search of gold. Unfortunately, this is also associated with genocide, the genocide of indigenous Native Americans that were living there, forcibly removed, killed. I mean, it was just it was an ugly scene. That's all with the progressed new moons, a huge migration situations with genocide, unfortunately, these huge migrations that shaped the next several generations. The next one was August 13th, 1935. That's when we had a progressed new moon in the sign of Sagittarius in the first house. Sag is a fire sign. What did we have? The Dust Bowl, drought, hundreds of thousands of people left Oklahoma, Central Plains area and migrated. There was record heat in 1936. The record was not broken until only three years ago. That's how hot it was. It was called the Great North American Heat Wave, the most severe in the history of North America, with the topsoil not being replenished. It was chemical farming. It was just this rapacious use of the earth and not putting back in. So it was all this overdoing it, that sag energy, overconfident, reckless, certainly arrogant. Half a million people were homeless as a result of that. Saturn, by the way, was also in Pisces as it is now. So interesting correlation. So drought, famine. 1840s, drought, famine, drought, famine, migration, drought, famine, migration. Now we come upon, now we come on to uh, March 25th, 2024. So it happens to be a lunar eclipse. Fascinating that the lunar eclipse starts three hours later, exact progressed new moon in Pisces, 19 degrees Pisces, 26 minutes and 17 seconds. Gotta got to have those details, right? So technically, it's within one second of, of an exact conjunction. So when the, when technically when the when the full uh, full moon lunar eclipse happens, which happens to be visible over North America, North and South America, it's very interesting that this is all showing up, right? The same area. So this south node, right? This loss or ending. Right. So here is this 19 degrees Pisces. It's what's considered a balsamic moon. Right. Right before you have a new moon, you have a phase called balsamic. So, yeah, you think like balsamic vinegar. What's balsamic vinegar? Aged. Aged. Right. Yeah, it tastes good, but it's, it's aged. So this is the end of a cycle. The cycle has given out all its oof. Right. And it's like it's the sign of the hermit in the tarot, the hermit. So it's this this elder, this ending, it speaks to endings and aging and elders and this wisdom that is garnered that can start and seed the next cycle. So this is now a water sign, right? We, so we've had earth, we've had fire, and now we have water, the progressed new moon and an angular sign, water. It's the water house. And the i want you to watch watch what happens march 25th especially with march 25th to april 7th because that's when the sun the progressed sun and moon will both be at that 19 degree point so that's going to be very which is essentially the the eclipse window this is the only time the other times that these progressed new moons happened they were not happening with eclipses this one is so this is especially telling. But watch what happens March 25th to April 7th. We were going to watch anyway, right? And it's an eclipse. But watch for the United States and how it, re how it re relates to home, boundaries, home, homes, families, land, right? In the mundane chart, it's about the land of a country. So it's going to be at 19 degrees. Then the moon will, of course, speed on. But the sun will stay at 19 until October, October 17th, when there's another eclipse window. So it's very, very fascinating that this is happening. That's why, like, I had to tell you this. Happening during these eclipses. So eclipses, major endings, major beginnings, right? Angular 
progress new moon major beginnings major turn mutable sign mutable houses is something that has been standing for a while begun and has stood for a long time is now being disassembled and moving into a whole new expression these are the secrets the ruler of this particular progressed new moon is Jupiter, right? Jupiter is the ruler, the modern ruler of Pisces is Neptune, which happens to be right there, very, very close to its run in Pisces, where it's been for, God, was it almost what, 16, 18 years? The traditional ruler is Jupiter. What's Jupiter doing? Well, the transiting, this outer ring here, the outer ring, we've got transiting Jupiter, and you're coming in pretty close to that conjunction with Uranus in the sign of Taurus. So, of course, the historic conjunction, one of the biggest events of 2024, is going to be that exact conjunction on 420. Universe has a sense of humor. Oh, what does this all mean? And why should we pay attention? Good question. We always look at the domicile. Who's Whose house are, is this new moon staying in? It's staying in Jupiter's house. Well, then Ju this is going to give us clues as to what goes down and how do we handle things. I also want to say that it's in the bounds of Mars, which means it's playing by Mars's rules. Well, look at this. Mars happens to be in the sign. Of, he's joining that Pisces party, transiting Mars. Tra Mars, Saturn, Venus will have just... After, has made that commitment to Saturn. This is all about a new direction into mystical velocity. So on a very spiritual level, the very foundation of our reality is now gearing into nonlinear. It's gearing up for trust. It's gearing up for compassion, mercy, forgiveness. What do we have to look out for? Deluding ourselves being in fantasy land, trying to escape. And I would say, keep an eye out for others. We have suicide at, for several years now, even before COVID, where the suicide rate spiked, we had our opioid and fentanyl crises, and they're still going on. So we want to look out for others. We, this is a very important time to be caring and watching and being kind and compassionate being but being real at the same time like we can't be martyrs we can't save people right it's like they, there has to be a choice but we can certainly send them light send them prayers be devoted to the highest outcome and this is about being really trusting trusting in the divine like we never have before and because the, the united states is starting this new chapter it's really going to be loud very loud for this country. Mars being in that fourth house. Progressed Mars. So since the United States became a country, Mars has gone from Gemini all over in 248 years. It's now over here in the sign of Libra. We'll check this out. We've got that south node eclipse, right? Happening right over that Mars retrograde in the sign of, of its exile in Libra, right over the USA Saturn. So what does that say? Well, the old ways of diplomacy ain't working. It ain't cutting it. That doesn't mean you'd be rude. We're going to <laughs> Mars retrograde. We are, we are developing new pathways of bridging people together, of harmony and equality. And maybe what it has to do with Mars retrograding very, very slowly right back toward that Saturn is like the very foundations of our government, the 11th house rules, parliament, Congress, legislative houses. Well, obviously we have seen the incredible amount of takedown and complete disarray, right? We, we see this happening. Mars over that Saturn, we are disassembling and cutting away what does not work, old, I would say with Saturn, conditioning of how government should look and appear and have to be. Look, we've had a wonderful 248 
year run, we've also seen a lot of darkness, slavery, land of the free and home of the brave, except if you're a slave. There's been a hypocrisy there from the very, very beginning. And so this is the time where we are making these corrections. We are coming together in a new fashion. The importance of being brave and standing up for each other and others, being ourselves, our sovereign selves, when it comes to this chart in the United States, this is forging a new path, a new path of democracy. So that's a major theme here. Venus is in its exaltation in Pisces. And this is about seriously making a commitment, long-term commitment to our spiritual disciplines, our value system. We have to mutate Pisces mutable. The importance of changing our value system, going online, what goes offline, old fantasy world, what's coming online, getting real, conjunction with Saturn, right? We got to get real about our spiritual values and our disciplines and making commitments to ourself, to our families, fourth house, to our very, the nation's foundation. So we are rewriting things with more compassion, with forgiveness, kindness. This is what this progressed new moon cycle and these eclipses are asking of us. And so this is going to color the United States. This angular change is going to color for the next 89 years until it gets to the seventh house. We're not going to be around for that. Patrick Watson says what the fourth house represents. In ancient astrology, it was called the subterraneous place. It's the bottom of the chart. It's the basement. And it's a place of originating. And it, it has to do with home, parents. Think about ancestors our private life, our origins, our land. These are, this is not mundane delineations. This is textbook traditional astrology. Origins, land, treasure. What do we treasure? Is a, we're getting a, hitting a reset button on the things that are most important to us. Treasures, hidden things. Pisces, we have a lot of hidden knowledge, mystical and occult knowledge that our country was founded on. All of the founding fathers were astrologers because they were Masons, really like 33 degree Masons, probably all 33 degrees. So they all studied astrology. What, how do you think this chart came about? This was not just some accident. This was a set up chart to create a certain result, resulting in a wealthy country. Yes, America has been the wealthiest country in the world. I'm not going to get into that today. But anyway, that's what we see. The history, it's now moving into this mystical, nonlinear dimension. You know, when you think about Pisces, it's about what we believe. So this is like all the conditioned response, and especially with Saturn there transiting through, like all the social consciousness and the conditioned uh, beliefs that we've had or structures of reality that we had to believe a certain thing about our homeland or about our homes and about our very foundations. Now it's like saying, okay, dissolve those beliefs, especially at Mars there. Mars is that, that blade. He's like all the BS, all the delusions that we've had around what our foundations really are, it's time to shift and change that. It's time to cut a new path that is not like the past. We're breaking from Mars is about to move into that over that Saturn. This is a break from the past, uh, secrecy, corruption with Saturn, you know, corruption in government, all of these things being a whole new frequency. I would also say too, now on a very mundane level, land, like let's talk about land because we have Saturn and Pisces for the whole world, coastlines, coastal flooding. These are very serious matters, water, water wars, water rights. We are starting a new chapter in relation to all of these things, water rights. The New York Times great article about water levels that the east coast of the united states is basically sinking most of it 
as you can see here. Look at that, Washington, Baltimore, all of this area, groundwater pumping for housing development. New York City, here's Boston. So Saturn in Pisces is some changes to the shorelines. It rules peninsulas, it rules coastlines. The state of Florida, Florida is a Pisces state, is going through a Saturn transit. So that's a very big reckoning, a huge accountability, huge cosmic wake-up call. Wake up about your shorelines. Don't go back to sleep. Don't delude yourself. Don't engage in fantasy projections and escapist behavior. We can't not deal with this anymore. Sea levels rising as well as pumping out the groundwater. This is all coming to a head. So let's talk about the saint and the movie. <laughs> that was a little heavy bit there. What can we do? What, who do we need to be? What mindset do we cultivate for this change, especially as it relates to the United States? The domicile ruler, Jupiter, in the sign of Taurus right now. It's still in Taurus. It's going to be coming into that conjunction with Uranus. So the access to the wisdom, our wisdom needs to be practical. It needs to be grounded, grounded in reality, right? It's not some airy-fairy intellectual projection. This is real. Ground in nature, Taurus, right? The the divine will reveal itself when we are connected deeply with nature and we come from our senses. What we, you know, Taurus is about what we can sense with our body, smell, taste, see, touch. As it's coming into conjunction with Uranus, it's saying, look, your knowledge, the knowledge and uh, Jupiter, right? The knowledge and the knowingness and the, the knowledge of who you are is going to be getting an upgrade. <laughs> and there are things that are not of this earth, Uranus, right? That are going to affect the earth that are coming from, like you could say, our future selves. This is like with Uranus, Jupiter and Uranus and Taurus is this sudden realizations and change and a liberation that comes from understanding where have we been stuck and in our way, maybe with Jupiter, it's like, where have we been so arrogant around how things are ordered? And Uranus comes along, it makes that conjunction. It's like, guess what? It's not what you think. And there is there's knowledge that is coming to us that is from, you could say, literally Uranus, another dimension. Think ETs, right? Speaking of, not an ET, but we'll talk about the saint. Bernadette. Bernadette of Lourdes. So what happened when Uranus was last in two cycles back when it was in late degrees of Taurus, the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction in Taurus happened in 1858. What happened in 1858? Out in the meadow, poor family. She's out collecting firewood, a very Taurus. You're efficient, chop wood, carry water, Taurus stuff. Bernadette, go get us some firewood. She's trudging out there. She sees this beautiful image. This woman appears to her in white clothes and white light. She's 14 years old, her first Saturn opposition. So she's coming into a place of initiation herself. Anyway, this is Mother Mary. Of course, the whole world forever changed. People start showing up. They start getting healings. This water, the little grotto where Mother Mary appears water comes up everybody's like whoa the church brought a rigorous interrogation the poor kid you know here's what i want to say about that bernadette was illiterate she didn't learn to read or write until she entered a nunnery she entered her convent very early the point being she didn't have the intellect i think about jupiter's like higher education you know where jupiter was transiting was this higher it was the knowledge and divine revelation will come when we are grounded and strong and resilient and being here now on the earth plane she saw what she saw she couldn't intellectually discuss what happened she just observed it with her senses so this divine energy coming through to to assist us and it's getting this big downgrade from Uranus, right? This other dimension is light. That, that when you think about Uranus being stealing thunder from the gods, right? This is Promethean kind of, you know, this download of 
of wisdom, Mother Mary gave her all these prophetic announcements, which were never disclosed ever. There's something for us in this. There's something here around this revelation, connecting in new ways, new and different ways. Our, our sense of what we know with Jupiter and what we believe in Jupiter is about to get an, an, a very startling upgrade. It's happening in the sixth house of the United States chart. Well, the sixth house is our workplace. Chop wood and carry water. You got to go to work. The source of this transformation as we're going through this time period with the United States is in the most simple chop wood, carry water moments is when we're getting these divine downloads. You don't go looking for it in like a church or a temple. It's like the temple of nature, the temple of being here now present in the body, getting this divine revelation. That's going to be a huge piece of it. It's called theophany. It's the appearance of a divine figure, which actually appears in the third dimension, as opposed to epiphany. Epiphany is when you have a realization, but it's on the inside. Theophany is when there, there's somebody out there, you're just seeing Jesus or Mary or Buddha or whoever, right? It's like, it's real and it's there outside of us. So theophany, theophany in the everyday workplace. We're just going to end this chat today by just talking about a very famous Hollywood movie that has some really cool guidance. Of course, it's humorous, of course, because, you know, I can't be that serious all the time. Guess what movie it is? I don't come looking for these things. They just land in my head. I put out to the universe, you know, what I'm going to talk about. And then I just get these downloads. What did I get the down? <laughs> what movie am I talking about that's got lessons for us? and some humor. The Poseidon Adventure. Yes, folks, The Poseidon Adventure. Came out in 1972. I remember this movie. It was a schlocky, I don't know, big budget summer. It spawned an entire genre of disaster movies. It was a big, big thing in the 70s, all these disaster movies. And Leslie Nielsen played the captain. He was the captain in airport. They kept casting him as the captain. There's some website, I think it's called Daily motion. It's so cheesy that the studios don't even care that somebody's pirating it, you know? It's like, oh my God. So it can be funny to watch. And it's, it's, they got an Oscar for their special effects, which kind of look cheesy by today's standards, of course. Starring or Ernest Borgnine, Stella Stevens, Pamela Sue Martin, who played on The Hardy Boys. <laughs> This ocean liner that gets hit by a tsunami. And of course, it goes upside down and everybody has to climb their way to safety this motley crew, different backgrounds, attitudes, this, the ages, right? They're just this motley crew of people and they all come together, right? So when something bad happens, banding together, right? Interesting that at one point when the capsizing happens, they find a way to, they have to start climbing from the, from the top up to the bottom, right? The bottom is on top, right? Everything, their world is flipped around and they have to climb to the hull to get out. Gene Hackman is the, is the preacher who leads everybody to, he's the, he's the savior. <laughs> ah, so Neptunian. Anyway, he is trying to convince people, come on, come on, we, here's the way out. We have to climb this giant Christmas tree, use it as a ladder to get up to the next level to keep going. Well, all these people are like, no, we're not going. And we don't, we don't, we're just not going to go there because, and there's this division, this other guy, the purser on the ship, he's saying, no, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. So they don't want to move. And what happens is many of them perish because right after that, there's this explosion on the ship and, and they, they get messed with. And then they're trying desperately to, to get up the tree, but it's too late. Lesson from the Poseidon adventure for this progressed new moon. When stuff happens, you stick together, you overcome your differences, you move forward, and you take risks, and you have to stay in faith. You can't get crazy. So whether it's a real tsunami that happens, right? I mean, look, we got we got this, we're, we're a storm. Think about the people on the living on the ocean in in coastal areas and the water comes out of their house and destroys their house. You know, there's a lot of that happening now. So whether it's actual literal tsunami or it could be just a tsunami in your life, right? Where your whole fourth house foundation falls apart. 
what do we do? Do we go crazy? Do we lose ourselves? Do we blame others? Do we act like Pisces martyrs? Do we stand up and try to save others? Well, you you can do what you can to invite them as Gene Hackman did. They didn't come. He had to let it go. You're like, okay, because we have to move on. So there's just so much of that you can do before realizing you got to move on. Taking risks. And of course, Pisces, being in faith. That song, There's Got to Be a Morning After. I hated that song. I was on the radio all over the place. I was so sick of that song. But anyway, there's got to be a morning after. It was the theme song and it won the Oscar that year. Carol Lindley, she sang it on the boat. It was so cheesy. She was she was supposed to be, she and her boyfriend and her brother were hippies that jumped on the boat and was like, hey guys, can we have a free ride? We'll, we'll sing for you in your ballroom every night. And I go, oh, sure. Yeah, like that would happen today, right? <laughs> this idea of sticking together and being versatile and resourceful and being willing to be uncomfortable when bad stuff happens, the last thing we want to do is have more uncomfortability. But as my teacher used to say, comfort is death. You know, in a place, in a place, in a time like that, you we have to cultivate getting out of our comfort zone. Fortunately, the domicile ruler Jupiter conjunct in Uranus, you got to get out of your comfort zone. Right? This is going to force us. What's coming is going to push us out of our comfort zone around money, around the things that we value, all the things that we thought we valued including a certain red velvet skirt. <laughs> Listen, this was like, I played this part. I, I watched the movie and I played it like five times. It was so funny. You have to go to this point. It's in the beginning after the capsizing has happened. Gene Hackman, he tells Pamela Sue Martin, this lovely ingenue, right? There's Carol Lindley and Pamela Sue Martin or these lovely leggy young ingenues and 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 she's wearing it's new year's eve so she's wearing this red velvet maxi remember maxi skirts she's wearing this red velvet maxi skirt with this fancy top and he says to her because they have to climb through this big giant like 30 foot high christmas tree fake christmas tree right they have to climb and use that as a ladder and he goes I'm sorry, you can't wear that skirt. You're going to have to take your skirt off. She goes, oh, okay. And she whips off. She just whips off her skirt, you know? <laughs> and what does she have underneath? Hot pants. It's the 70s, folks. Well, that was convenient. And now, of course, then the next two hours, you just see her climbing, all these girls climbing, guys behind them, checking out their butt, you know? Of course, you got to sell tickets in Hollywood. What can I say? So what's the lesson there? Well, you want to be prepared. <laughs> When in doubt, wear hot pants because when when stuff hits the fan, you're gonna have to be versatile. Off with that skirt. I have to save my life. By contrast, Shelly Winters kvetching. She and her husband, they're always kvetching and complaining within her. And she was, you know, and she's wearing this chiffon dress, like mother of the bride, you know, and then she just always kvetching. So use this as a guide for. This new moon cycle, the Poseidon adventure. Oh my God, where am I going to be when stuff hits the fan? How how willing am I to be in faith and let go of comfort? And does everyone make it? No, there's like 10 people. Of course, I'm not going to give away. Some people don't make it out all the way to the end, but at least they try. They make, they, they make this attempt and they move through whatever it is they have to move through. But those people that wanted to stay comfortable, doesn't work. It reminded me of when the Kilauea volcano erupted and there was this photo, people playing golf and there's these two mile high volcanic plume right next to them and they're still playing golf. It's like, okay, if that was not live coverage of Uranus and Taurus, nothing is, oh, I cannot let go of my golf game. I don't care that disaster, Uranus, right? Catastrophe is happening, but I must have my golf game. So take your cues, Bernadette of Lourdes the knowledge and the wisdom that comes from just experiencing truth, not intellectual, but just grounded in your own senses. Poseidon adventure, all of the above, everything we've just talked about. I would say, too, cultivating kindness, connecting with others mystically, commitment to our spiritual disciplines will see us through. And I would say, too, it's small deeds multiply. Do small things really well, as Eckhart Tolle says in A New Earth. 
pretty soon people start feeling them and it cre creates this simpatico. When you do something kind and nice and look out for someone else, they start, they'll start doing it themselves. And that's how we change the world. We're spreading fourth house. What is our new foundation built on kindness, built on compassion and not fooling ourselves. And that's how we're going to move through this, this very big chunk of time. So that's my little secret message of eclipse season. You know, I find it's interesting that the eclipses create an X, the last total solar eclipse, the great American eclipse, and then the one April 8th, they form this X right in Southern Illinois. X marks the spot, which is very similar to where the area of the Dove and the Keys of Enoch, it's like North America with this, on the page of this mystical book, you can see the map of North America and this image of the Dove imprinted over it. And I find it very interesting that this area is getting activated by eclipses, the area of the Dove. And that area happens to be where there's this major fault line, the New Madrid fault line. So you want to talk about Saturn and Pisces. The last time that thing went off was 1820 or so, and it rang church bells in Boston. So it's a much deeper fault line, not as long as the San Andreas, but it's deeper. So if there are earthquake swarms along there, what happens if that's an earthquake? The Mississippi River, if you ever seen that whole Gordon Michael Scallion map or the I Am America map, these are like visions that people have received around the United States and Canada, and really the whole world changing with shorelines. And you see the Mississippi River widens into this like inland sea and it creates like two continents, the United States. So I mean, that's, well, there's a Saturn and Pisces conversation, right? Really big. And who knows if that'll happen? Maybe that's just worst case scenario, but it's this very Nostradamus-y kind of prediction around, around the possibility of these things. But I would say, who are we? in the face of radical changes that we've never seen before, who are we and who do we become? I hope you've gotten some value out of this. Please do like, share, subscribe. I love to hear your thoughts and feelings on these things. And we will see you very soon. Here, Liana Samsara, Star Sound Speaks, starsoundastrology.com. Bye for now.